to unbelievable rising inequality in our country today, to the elimination of regulation that help workers and protect our families, and an open attack on our environment that has put our groundwater, clean air, and other natural resources at risk. And we saw that recently with the passage of what I would consider an awful high capacity well bill. And I will say after that discussion and that debate, follow the money, and you can follow the money. Right. We're here today to see what the vast majority is thinking. We're here to say what the vast majority of our constituents are saying at coffee shops, kitchen tables, and through local referenda all over behind me here around the state. The Supreme Court got it wrong. And it's time to change. Money isn't speech. Corporations are not people. And I love that sign there, very informative, correct. And we can no longer afford the corrupting influence that has infiltrated our government since the Citizens United decision. This is an issue that affects both parties, yet there is not a single Republican on our resolution. We know the majority party does not want to discuss Citizens United, much less take any action to change it just as they don't want to act on similar efforts to restore fairness to our elections, like nonpartisan redistricting reform, and I'm proud to say that is my bill as well, and that should be a vote. Sadly, they like the law as it is, and so do their wealthy friends. But it is time, way past time, to level the playing field and give every citizen an equal voice in our elections. The voice of the mother working for minimum wage, or the retired factory, factory worker, or the college student worried about repaying their student loans should not be drowned out by those who seek to pay them less, cut their social security, or profit from their student debt. So we're here today once again to say enough is enough. It's time for the people to take back their elections. It's time to overturn Citizens United. And it's time to find out who is on their side and who is not. So thank you. And I'd like to introduce to you my colleague on this resolution, Representative Lisa Subek. Thank you. Thank you. It's a tough act to follow next time I want to speak before you. <laughs> thank you to Senator Hansen and thank you um, to all of you for being here today. Especially thank you to the organizations and individuals who are still here fighting seven years later, seven years since Citizens United was ruled upon. And we see citizens standing up more and more in bigger volumes than ever before to speak out against big money in politics. With its Citizens United ruling seven years ago, the Supreme Court of the United States opened the floodgates to unlimited spending in our elections by wealthy special interests and corporations. Through their ruling, the Supreme Court sold our democracy to the highest bidder. They set up an unfair playing field in which those who can afford to spend insurmountable amounts of money to affect our elections have disproportionately large amounts of influence on what happens right here in this building and in our federal capitol building. The ruling effectively handed a giant megaphone to corporations and billionaires who can afford to drown out the voices of hardworking middle class families, small business people, farmers, low wage workers, and so many more everyday people in our state. Big spending and secret dark money in our elections has continued to grow every single year since the 2010 ruling. Right here in Wisconsin, special interest groups spent $8.9 million in 2016 on legislative races alone, and that surpasses a $7.1 million record that had been previously set. And to be clear, that is just the money we're able to trace. Unfortunately, due to diluted disclosure laws, much of that dark money cannot be traced um, to its origins. 
The people are tired of having their voices drowned out by big money special interests. They understand that as long as politicians are beholden to wealthy special interests and dependent upon this flood of cash at election time, the interests of the people, of the constituents who we are elected to represent, are taking a back seat to the desires of the wealthy campaign donors. And that's why we have seen a sweeping movement across the country and across this state to get big money out of politics. We have seen the Republicans currently in control of the governor's office and the legislature here in Wisconsin put their donors ahead of their constituents time and time again. And in no small part, this is due to the flood of campaign cash allowed by Citizens United. It is clear that Republicans in this building have failed to put Wisconsin families first, and that needs to change right now, and that needs to change today. That said, this is not a Republican or a Democratic issue when you talk to the everyday person out there. Across the board, Republicans and Democrats alike and third party folks agree that we need to overturn Citizens United and get big money and get corporate money out of our po political system. We have seen 105 referendums and resolutions in local municipalities and counties across the state of Wisconsin pass, through, and, and these are small towns, big towns, villages, cities, across the board, passed by overwhelming margins. And they call upon us as state legislators and our Congress people to take action. These resolutions have passed in very democratic areas like Madison and Milwaukee, but they've also passed by overwhelming margins upwards of 60 or 70 percent, some as high as 90 percent, in areas like Nina and Menasha and Delavan and the Republican stronghold of Waukesha. Overwhelming margins. Eight such resolutions were just passed in Wisconsin on the ballot on April 4th, with margins ranging from 70 percent on the low end. 70 percent was the lowest number by which one of these resolutions, referendums passed. And, and that was in Caledonia, 91% in Monona. I think we have some Monona folks with us here today. <laughs> Small and large municipalities alike passed referendums on April 4th, including the town and the village of Blue Mounds, Crystal Lake, Fox Crossing, Jordan, and the city of Racine, yeah. all with margins over 70%. The people are speaking out on this issue. Senator Hansen and I, Senator Hansen, I turned the wrong way, um, introduced a similar resolution to this last session. But Republicans refused to even hold a hearing on it. In fact, in the State Assembly, the committee to which this resolution was referred had one bill referred to the committee, the entire two-year <laughs> legislative session. Yet, they were too busy to hold a hearing. <laughs> they never met once to hold a hearing on the only bill referred to their committee. That is shameful. Yeah. And that is what happens when big money enters our political system. I ask, what are they afraid of? Are they afraid of the people? Yeah. Are they afraid of their constituents? Let the people's voices be heard. We should want to hear what our constituents have to say. That is our job. The resolution that we are introducing today is an important first step toward overturning Citizens United. The resolution would put an advisory uh, question on the ballot in November 2018, asking the voters of Wisconsin simply if they support a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United. We must take urgent action to restore fairness and level the playing field in a political system that is clearly rigged to favor big money special interests and corporations over the people of Wisconsin. At the very, very least, we must take this critical first step and pass this resolution to let the people of Wisconsin be heard. Next, I'd like to introduce Richard Russell, who joins us from Wisconsin United to Amend.
My organization, Wisconsin United to Amend, is transpartisan. We do not believe that this is a partisan issue. We cut across every party line. We're also a strictly volunteer organization. We have no paid staff. We have no budget to speak of. We offer no financial contributions or incentives to anybody to join us in supporting the resolution which Senator Hansen and Representative Subek are talking about. Nonetheless, spontaneously from the grassroots, 105 communities across the state of Wisconsin have activists who have decided that they are so disgusted with the corruption of the political system that resulted from the Citizens United decision that they had to do something about it and what they chose to do was organize a local referendum that would advocate that we overturn Citizens United, get big money out of politics, declare that only real, living, breathing human beings are entitled to human rights, and that free spending is not the same as free speech, and that we should do what all 50 states and the U.S. Congress did during the course of the 20th century and regulate campaign yes. financing. Yes. Yeah. 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 Standing in the way of that is the Citizens United decision, and the Supreme Court tells us what the Constitution means, and they say that that's the law of the land. So. If you believe in the rule of law, that is the law of the land. There's only one way you can overrule the U.S. Supreme Court, and that's through a constitutional amendment. And when you ask the citizens of Wisconsin, is such an amendment a good idea? They say yes. They say it north, south, east, west, central, in metro areas, in suburbs, in rural areas, rich, poor, as Representative Subic points out, in places as bright blue as Madison, as places as deep red as Waukesha. It doesn't matter where you ask this question. People given the opportunity to vote, say, we want our democracy back. And they say it by overwhelming margins. Now, it's easy to say overwhelming margins. Just, I can just throw that word out there. Let me put that in context for you. Here are the results of what everybody agrees are the five most overwhelming dominant landslide victories in American presidential history. 1936, Franklin Roosevelt. Elf Landon carried two states, Roosevelt, uh, took the uh, election with all the rest with 60.8%. Four years later, Wendell Wilkie carried 10 states, Roosevelt 54.7% of the popular vote. Fast forward to 1964, Lyndon Johnson swamped Barry Goldwater. He had 61.1% of the vote. 1984, Ronald Reagan triumphed over Walter Mondale, who took D.C. and Minnesota. Reagan got 58.8% of the vote. Michael Dukakis, four years after that, got run over by George H.W. Bush. Bush had 53.4% of the vote. Now look at these numbers. Here they are in summary. Look at these numbers. 60, 54, 61, 58, 53. These are landslide victories. And the highest, the highest margin of victory here was Lyndon Johnson's 61.1%. Now we're going to talk about what happens when you put this amendment this proposal that Representative Subek and Senator Hansen are advancing to a vote of the people of Wisconsin and see if you can find any margin of victory that's as low as 61%. Yeah. Yeah. 2011, the year after Citizens United came down, Madison 84%, Dane County as a whole 78%. 2012, a presidential election year, West Dallas 70%, Dunn County 72%, Eau Claire County 71%. 2013, 68%, 77%, Whitewater, 84%. Two county boards, Douglas and Jefferson County, said this is such a no-brainer, we won't even waste the ballot space on it. We will, we will endorse it as a county board. 2014, the spring elections. Waukesha, Waukesha, which is widely considered, and justly so, to be a very conservative area. They think this is a great idea. 69%, Wauwatosa, 64%, Edgerton, 87%. Delavan, if you're, if you're listening, Governor, Delavan, 76%, 85%, 76%. 2014 fall, and let me emphasize, these are not public opinion polls. They weren't conducted over the Internet, over telephones. These are actual elections, yes. the same sort of elections where you vote for governor, senator, president, school board, city council. These are ballot items, actual voters showing up at the polls, getting a chance to express their opinion. In the state's largest county, Milwaukee County, 70%. Green Bay, our third largest city, 77%. Senator Hansen, fine work. 79%, 77%, 69%, 80%. 2015, 69, 80, 63%. 2016, 
Two city councils, Mosman and New Lisbon, unanimously went on record. They said, we aren't even going to bother our voters with this. This is so obvious that we will, as a city council, just endorse it unanimously. 2016 presidential election year. Janesville, 84%. Beloit, 74%. Plaqueville, 84%. Monroe, Monroe, where are we? Monroe here. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're yeah. Monroe, the Monroe slid over there. All right. Monroe. Thank you. 82% Monroe. Onward, more in 2016, all of Rock County, all of Rock County, 86%, Reedsburg, 86 Manitowoc, 81%, 79%, 88%, 91% in Spring Valley. 2017, Racine, state's third largest city, I'm sorry, Green Bay is the state's third largest city, they're the fourth largest, 81%, Monona, Monona, 91%. Unless you think I'm cherry picking, go to this website, tinyearl.com slash Wisconsin Ready to Amend. See all 105. There isn't a single one there as low as the 61% by which Lyndon Johnson swamped Barry Goldwater. Now, that is the margin of victory that you get when you ask the people, do you believe in democracy? (laughs) It might be alleged that, well, we've only consulted half the people in the state of Wisconsin, and that's true. We've we've only put this to the test for half the people. And they might say, well, perhaps if you were to ask the other half, things would even out. Maybe just cherry pick the people who are most predisposed to agree with this amendment. And perhaps the the other half of the state wouldn't agree. Well, Representative Subek and Senator Hansen are giving them a wonderful golden opportunity to have their voice heard too. Ask them. Let the people vote. And now I'd like to turn the microphone over to Peter Skopek of the Wisconsin Public Interest Research Group. Good morning, everyone. Uh, My name is Peter Skopek. I'm the director at WISPERG, the Wisconsin Public Interest Research Group. Uh, We are a statewide, nonpartisan public interest organization. We do advocacy and organizing work around the state on a pretty broad variety of issues, all of which have been impacted by the influence of money in politics. So that includes public health, financial security, good government, lots of different issues. Um, I I first want to thank Representative Subek and Senator Hansen for reintroducing this really important uh, resolution. I want to say thank you to, uh, to Matt and the Democracy Campaign for the great work that they're doing to bring more transparency to our politics and to our elections. And I especially want to say thank you to everyone at United to Amend. That's all of you here for the incredible work that you're doing around the state in a completely volunteer-driven grassroots uh, effort to get big money out of our elections. Uh, like we've heard, uh, more than 100 resolutions and referenda passed all around the state, which is really Tremendous, and I think that deserves a lot of recognition. So thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, So to wrap up today, I want to say a few things about the scope of the problem around the country. Uh, I also want to talk about what uh, what states around the country and what municipalities around the country are doing to address the issue of money in politics uh, more broadly. So as we've heard, the 2010 Citizens United ruling uh, struck down limits on election spending by outside groups, and that allowed uh, groups like super PACs and uh, dark money organizations to basically pour unlimited amounts of money into our elections. Uh, So it's really not surprising that we're seeing more outside spending coming into our elections and more dark money coming into our elections. Uh, So the 2016 presidential election and the 2016 election cycle was the most expensive in US history. Super PAC spent uh, $1.1 billion uh, in, in that election, uh, which is uh, almost double what was spent in the, in the last presidential election cycle in 2012. Uh, another problem is that this money is coming from a smaller and smaller set of people, people who have a lot of money to spend from corporations that have a lot of money to spend as well. Uh, so this means that if you want to run for office, you have to know a lot of people who have a lot of money to give, and you have to spend a lot of time with people who have money to give and who can write you the the biggest checks possible. So that discourages you from going to spend time with your constituents and listening to your constituents or small donors that you're representing. Um, And it also means that potential candidates who want to run for office and don't have connections to big donors are discouraged from running in the first place. 
So uh, Wisperg also took a look at uh, the 34 U.S. Senate races uh, last year, um, and we found that 77 percent of funding in those Senate races came from out-of-state donors and special interests. So it's also a matter of going to people who are not actually in your constituency but are in a, in a different state who are pouring money into our elections. Um, the figures for Wisconsin's Senate race uh, showed that uh, almost two of every three dollars that, uh, that were poured into the race came from out-of-state interests. So what all of this means in the end is that big money is making our politics less representative and it's making it less responsive as well. Um, the interests of ordinary voters are being drowned out, which is something we've heard already. Uh, and it's, it's really no surprise that people are losing their faith in their elected officials and in the system as well. So ultimately what we have to do is create a campaign finance system that, uh, that gives every citizen, regardless of wealth, the opportunity and the chance to uh, to influence the political process and uh, get in touch with their with their legislators. That starts with overturning Citizens United. And I want to say thank you again for uh, uh, to Representative Subek and Senator Hansen for reintroducing uh, this uh, this resolution that would make it easier for people to have their voices heard on this really important issue. Uh, in the meantime, before we can overturn Citizens United, there are things that states across the country and municipalities and counties across the country are doing to reduce the impact of big money in politics and empower more small donors and uh, ordinary voters in, in our elections. I want to highlight a few of those things. Uh, local governments in Seattle and in Howard County in Maryland, for example, uh, enacted small donor em empowerment programs that, that encourage candidates for office to, uh, to fundraise from small donors rather than going to, like I said, those big out-of-state interests who can write them the biggest checks. Uh, it also encourages more, uh, more, more people to get involved in the election process and to spend more time with, uh, with candidates and their elected officials. Um, aside from that, six states have passed automotic, uh, automatic voter registration laws since 2015, which engages more people in our elections and makes our politics more representative and responsive. So to wrap up, I want to say thanks again uh, to uh, our, our legislators who've reintroduced this bill. I want to say thanks to everyone who's working really hard to make our politics more, uh, more responsive, more representative, more transparent. And again, I want to thank all of you for being here today and for the great work that you're doing in your communities uh, on this issue. It's, it's incredible to see how far this has come, thanks to, like I said, a really impressive grassroots volunteer-driven effort. So thank you again to all of you. And uh, I'd, I'd like to pass it back off to Representative Subek. Sure. Thank you again. And before we take questions, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge a couple of my colleagues who are here. I think one of them had to step out. Um, but Representative Dana Wax was here. And I see Representative David Bowen joined us. I'm not sure if there's anyone else. Wave your hands frantically. <laughs> All right, I just want to acknowledge them for being here, and certainly to all of my colleagues who have co-sponsored this resolution over the last two cycles and are doing so again this cycle. Um, really pleased um, for the amount of support that I've been getting among my Democratic colleagues and invite my Republican colleagues to join us in the fight against big money in politics and to join us in working to unrig our broken system. Um, we'll now take questions from any members of the press that are here. Any? All right, well, thank you all. Really appreciate your coming out. And thank you especially to all of the folks who are here um, who have been working at a grassroots level so hard on this issue, and we will win this fight. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are just starting to